So climate change is here, and anybody who doesn't believe it, just get up and look out the window. You'll see it. The water's getting higher, you know, the sea level, there seems to be more storm surges, there seems to be more storms, period. We're seeing it all the time. There's more and more. The tides never seem to be low anymore. They seem to be high, high, and higher. If we do get some sou'westers, you know, you're going to see about three feet go off those bank every time they start pounding. I mean, if you look at uh, the mainland, their coastlines are basically made up of granite and heavy rock. Ours is made up of sandstone, which is easily tearing down. This was a point. All this was a point coming away out to here. And we used to pull our boats up. Now it's all gone, eh? Even just a natural erosion in the springtime, you know, from freeze and thaw, you get a storm, it, it multiplies that by a factor of probably hundreds of thousands. People are saying when I was a kid, there used to be all kinds of bank swallows along the shore. Now we hardly ever see one. What's causing that? And you notice that that's a soft bank. Every time the waves pound that thing, it just comes down a bit. The cliff swallows are all gone. Those banks used to have hundreds of cliff swallows. Now that it's falling around so much, they can't get their holes. They dig in about, you know, quite a little ways, and they're all gone. We're uh, losing so much coastline that we don't have that uh, buffer area along the coastline. I've been putting them always out, marking the harbor here, probably 35 years. Tides are different. Uh, tides are changing. It's high tide and higher. There's no high and low. Like years ago, you you get a low tide, you won't get a bucket of clams anywhere. Tide to be low. Now you, it's very seldom that you get a low tide. The fisherman in Victoria that told me that he's noticed when you tie up your boat like the water is higher now because the boat is closer to the top of the wharf. Whether it's because the ice is melting up north or in a pot, hot water is higher than cold water. Like that lighthouse up in uh, up West Point, the tide came in so high, it was right up to the foundation of the lighthouse. And there had been a big sand dune and a boardwalk and everything in front of it. And that's all, it was all washed out. And unfortunately, you know, those types of storms are, are going to get more frequent. There's never been a state of emergency declared in this village yet. The closest one we had was about two years ago when we had, uh, I guess they call it the 100-year tidal surge. 21st of December, and that's the first day of winter. And then at that time, it was the full moon, and we had a, a storm at last, two or three, four days. Streets down close to the wharf had approximately uh, one meter of water on the streets, uh, which cut off the lower end of the village uh, on towards Rustico Harbor. Couldn't get through with any equipment. I got about 360 feet of waterfront. Well, 15 feet of land was gone. Like I said, I got my own private wharf, and the wharf was gone. I had to build a new wharf. It was almost up to the center of the community here. We had to barricade off several of the streets, and I think there was 85 homes that were completely isolated due to the water. There's a bridge right at the end of my property, like uh, the main bridge, and that bridge was closed down for two days because the tide was over the bridge and there was like driftwood and stuff on the bridge after, so we had to clean it out. The one up here about six miles up the road, Easterbed Bridge, it was put out of commission for at least six or eight weeks. We made a presentation one day at the Gulf Shore School in North Rustico. Shortly after the December 21st, 2010 storm surge, the kids were all very interested in it. And they all remembered going across one of those bridges on a bus where the waves were crashing over the side of the bridge and they had never seen that before. It may be a day that they'll remember for the rest of their life. It greatly affects our sewer system. From the sea tide pushing in, the water was shooting out of this manhole about this high on that day. When the tide gets that high, 
uh, we can't handle the amount of stormwater coming into the sanitary system. So we need to address that situation. Saltwater intrusion in aquifers. Um, we've done a couple of studies on that. Uh, we're kind of concerned about sea level rise causing a more uh, penetration of the salt water into fresh water. All water in PEI is groundwater. So it's, it's well water. Um, it's pumped up uh, and fed through a distribution system. There's getting to be more frequent of instances of salt water uh, showing up in their wells. That was probably, I'd say, 20, 25 years since we had a storm like that bad. We had them before, like you get them every now and then, but they're more often now, so. We're leaning more towards uh, the weather-related events now, sitting on the ocean, especially with the, the hurricane systems now are changing and becoming more frequent eh? and getting a lot closer every day. To be prepared for that type of an event. All those things are adding up and um, like we're going to have to do something about our road construction, our bridge construction, and shoreline protection system. But if it keeps going the way it's going in 50 years, and like if the tide keeps coming and coming, we're going to have to raise the island. And that's the thing. We live on an island and it's shrinking.